Buckingham Palace, held by the British royal family, is claimed to be the world's most costly home, valued at $4.9 billion, according to Forbes. The Queen of England has a plethora of opulent residences, the most opulent of which is Buckingham Palace. The world's most expensive residence, formerly known as Buckingham House, was built in 1703 by the Duke of Buckingham. There was a huge townhouse erected on the property that had been in private ownership for at least 150 years at the heart of today's palace. This property was purchased by King George III in 1761 and eventually became the Queen's House, the private house for Queen Charlotte. Before we start, go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more luxurious content. Without any further delay, let us start. Buckingham Palace is the monarch of the United Kingdom's London's residence and administrative headquarters. The palace, which is located in the city of Westminster, is frequently used for state ceremonies and royal hospitality. It has served as a focal point for the British people during both happiness and sad times. The edifice at the heart of today's palace, formerly known as Buckingham House, was a huge townhouse built for the Duke of Buckingham in 1703 on a site that had been in private possession for at least 150 years. King George III built the Queen's House for Queen Charlotte in 1761 as a private house for her. Mostly architects John Nash and Edward Bloor, who built three wings around the central courtyard, developed it in the 19th century. The East Front, which houses the well-known balcony on which the British royal family customarily congregates to greet people, was the last significant structural addition completed in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The Palace Chapel, which was destroyed by a German bomb during World War II, the Queen's Gallery was erected on the site and opened to the public in 1962 to display works of art from the Royal Collection. On the guidance of Sir Charles Long, the original early 19th century interior designs incorporated widespread use of vividly coloured scagliola and blue and pink lapis. King Edward VII oversaw a partial redecoration in Bella Epoch cream and gold-coloured scheme. Many of the smaller reception rooms are decorated in the Chinese Regency style with furnishings and fittings sourced from the Royal Pavilion in Brighton and Carlton House. There are over 775 rooms in the palace and the garden is London's largest private garden. The state rooms, which are used for official and state entertaining, are open to the public for the majority of August and September each year, as well as on certain days in the winter and spring. On the ascension of Queen Victoria, who was the first monarch to stay there, Buckingham Palace became the major royal residence in 1837. Her predecessor, William IV, had died before it was completed. While the state apartments were a riot of glitter and colour, the new palace's requirements were a little less so. It was said that the chimney smoked so heavily that the flames had to be turned off and that the palace was frequently cold. The inside stank because of poor ventilation and when gas lamps were installed, there was major concerns about gas buildup on the lower floors. The staff was also thought to be sloppy and sluggish as the palace was filthy. Following the Queen's marriage in 1840, her husband, Prince Albert, focused on reorganising the household offices and employees as well as correcting the palace's design flaws. All of the issues had been resolved before the end of 1840. The builders, on the other hand, were scheduled to return within a decade. Prior to Prince Albert's death, the palace was frequently the site of musical performances, with some of the most well-known contemporary musicians performing there. On three occasions, composer Felix Mendelssohn is known to have performed there. When Johann Strauss II and his orchestra visited England, they performed there. In addition to the normal royal ceremonies, investitures and presentations, Buckingham Palace was frequently the site of opulent costume parties throughout Victoria's reign. Edward VII, the new king, began refurbishing the palace in 1901. The king and his wife Queen Alexandra had always been at the top of London society, with their companions known as the Marlborough House Set, were amongst the most prominent and stylish of the time. Buckingham Palace, the ballroom, guard entrance, marble hall, grand staircase, vestibules and galleries were all redecorated in the Bella Epoch cream and gold colour scheme that it still has today. 
becoming a setting for grand entertaining once more, but some argued that Edward's heavy redecorating was at odds with Nash's original work. The palace was spared throughout the First World War, which lasted from 1914 to 1918. The royal family remained in the house while the more precious contents were evacuated to Windsor. To the dismay of his visitors and servants, the king instituted rationing at the palace. David Lloyd George convinced the king to go even further and ostentatiously shut the wine cellars and abstain from drinking, much to the king's later sorrow, in order to set a good example for the supposedly drunken working class. The workers continued to consume alcohol and the king was dissatisfied with his imposed abstinence. The castle was bombarded nine times during the Second World War, which began in 1939. The most serious and well-publicised occurrence occurred in 1940 when the palace chapel was demolished. Buckingham Palace is still very much a working edifice and the heart of the United Kingdom's constitutional monarchy, hosting a variety of royal events and ceremonies, ranging from entertaining foreign heads of states to commemorating achievements at investitures and receptions. Each year, over 50,000 people attend state banquets, luncheons, dinners, receptions and garden parties at the palace. Her Majesty also met with the Prime Minister on a weekly basis and welcomes newly appointed foreign ambassadors to Buckingham Palace. The facade of the palace is 350 feet long, 390 feet wide and 80 feet high, with a total flooring area of nearly 830,000 square feet. There are 775 rooms in total, comprising of 188 staff rooms, 92 offices, 78 bathrooms, 52 main bedrooms and 19 state rooms. There's also a post office, a movie theater, a swimming pool, a doctor's office and a jewelry workshop. The primary rooms are located on the Piano Nobile, which is located behind the palace's west-facing garden facade. The music room, with its wide bow and the dominant feature of the facade, is at the heart of this opulent suite of royal rooms. The blue and white drawing rooms flank the music room on either side. The picture gallery, which is top lit and 55 yards long, is located in the suite's centre and serves as a corridor connecting the state rooms. The picture gallery houses numerous works by Rembrandt, Van Dyck, Rubens and Vermeer, as well as the throne room and the green drawing room, which are accessible from the picture gallery. The green drawing room serves as a large anteroom to the throne room and is part of the ceremonial route to the throne from the guardhouse and the guard staircase summit. White marble sculptures of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert dressed in Roman garb stand on a tribune surrounded with tapestries in the guard room. These very formal chambers are only used for ceremonial and official entertaining during the summer. However, they are open to the public. That is all for today, folks. We'll see you in the next video.